desires in ways that did not please God. In verse 4 of chapter 14, when it stated that it was the Lord, it didn't mean that God initiated Samson's intention to marry an unbeliever. Samson was motivated by his own desires to seek marital companionship outside of God's people. Amen? So everything that came upon Samson, he brought it upon himself. A lot of times we want to blame God for things that we go through and things that happen to us. But a lot of times, if you'll look back, God gave you a lot of red flags concerning that person or that individual or that thing that you were trying to do. He tried to keep you from doing it. But you know, if you keep pushing, God will just let you go ahead and do what you want to do and let you suffer the consequences. Amen? So Samson was motivated by his own desires. God did not, did use the sin of Samson as an occasion to accomplish his purpose against the Philistines, though. He let Samson kill a thousand Philistines with the jawbone of an ass. Amen? Yeah. Samson's problem was lust. He was more concerned with satisfying his sexual passions more so than pleasing God. Yeah. How many men and women in the world today don't come to the Lord because they can't stop shacking up with somebody? And that's the whole problem why you're not getting married. Back in the day, women got married. My mother wouldn't even let me leave home until I was married. I asked my mom when I got ready, I said, uh, when I finish school next year, I, you know, can I get my own apartment and move out? She said, you won't leave here till you're married. I'm like, I can't leave till I'm married? Jesus, I hurried up and got me a boyfriend. I, I mean, I didn't care how he looked. I didn't care. My sisters used to tell me, you have the ugliest boyfriends. I didn't care. I wanted out. If that was the only way I had out, amen. Amen? Amen. And I used to like dark-skinned boys, you know. I didn't like the yellow boys. I wanted to, the darker they were to me, the handsomer they were. And I'm like, my, my sister said, you like him? Mm-hmm. And I told my husband he was a blessed man because he was yellow. But he, was, he asked me to marry him. I'm like, yes. Amen. Amen. So listen to your parents, uh, saints. Amen. They know what's best for you. They have your best interests at heart at all times. Amen. Yeah. Samson was motivated by his own desires. He didn't, he didn't care what mom and dad said. And the first wife that he married... She got burned up because of something he did to the Philistines. And then he met Delilah. We got a lot of Delilahites today. Oh, they'll flash these fake eyelashes that look like they should be on a dog or something. I've never seen nothing like them in my life. These thick eyelashes way out here. And they bat them and they just look like windshield wipers almost. I said, Lord, you look good already. You don't even need it. Amen? Fingernails looking like Elvira, the, the pointed fingernails. Why would you want to do yourself like that? Oh, but you know what? Samson liked women like that. Amen? He loved women like that. As a matter of fact, he had a prostitute one night. Amen? And before he met Delilah. But he loved Delilah. Amen? He, he didn't know that the Philistines had commissioned her to do them a favor. Amen? See, you have to watch who you get hooked up to sometimes. Because you never know what the devil has get, gotten a deal with them for to get to you. Amen? Hallelujah. The enemy is shrewd. Hallelujah. He don't care who he used. He don't care how he used them. But it's to get you, amen, out of God's will, amen? So you have to be careful. So Delilah kept, well, Samson was spending the night with her, and she kept bugging him. She's, he's, Samson, tell me where your strength lies. Because, see, that was her job. They were going to get her lots of money to find out where his strength lies, amen? And she just bugged the man to death. 
If somebody asking you something every day, every hour, all the time, you better think, man. Don't be a foolish man. Don't be a foolish woman, amen? He, she asked him, said, Samson, tell me where your strength lies and, and wherewith thou mightest be bound to afflict thee. Now, if you're a man, you ain't even listening to her words. Because look what she said. Tell me where your strength is so I can bind you and, and we can afflict you. Love is blind. Look like it's deaf too, you know? It was death with Samson. He was so in love with Delilah, it just blinded anything she said or did. Amen. So he said to her, if they bind me with, if you bind me with seven green whiffs that were never dry, then shall I be weak, Delilah. So she did that. She told the Philistines. They brought her the whiffs and she bound them with them. And then she had the nerve to say, Samson, he was sleeping all the time. Samson, wake up. The Philistines is on you. He woke up and saw he was in them sheaves, them whips. He just broke them off of him. Oh, she didn't like that. She was upset with him a little bit. So she asked him again. She said, Samson, I want you to quit mocking me now and quit lying to me. Look how folk are talk to you. But we still don't pay attention to them, do we? If a woman loves you, she ain't going to keep bothering you about where your strength lies, she going to be glad you're strong. Amen? Because we want somebody to protect us, don't we, sisters? We want somebody that we can feel secure with. Amen? But she just kept on and kept on. She asked him again. He said, well, if they bind me with new ropes and that were never used by nobody, he said, that'll make me weak. So she told the Philistines they bought her the new ropes. She bound him up. He was asleep. She bound him up, then woke him up. Samson, the Philistines be upon you. Yeah. Now, this is the second time, amen, yeah. that she done did something, and the Philistines done came in the room, but there he is all. He's free because he was, still had his strength. The third time she asked Samson, he's, she just kept bugging him and bugging him. He said, well, I'll tell you what. If you weave my hair into seven locks and, 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 and put a web on it, he said, that, that should do it. She said, all right. So she fastened it, it with a pin so that she made sure he was in that web. And when he woke out of his sleep, he had to break the pin and the web. And she was, oh, she really got mad then because she think, well, now he's trying to make a fool out of me, all right? But I don't know if Samson was getting wise to her or what. But she pressed on the man. You know, when you love somebody, if they keep pressing on you, sooner or later you're going to give in. You're going you're gonna to really tell them the truth about things. Amen? She pressed Samson daily, it said, as, as to where his strength was. So he finally told her the truth. Delilah, I'm a Nazarite. And if you shave my head, he said, my strength will go away from me. I'll be just like any other man. Now, if I were you, if I were to ask all of you today, where was Samson's strength? You probably would tell me it was in his hair. Mm -mm. It wasn't in his hair. Every time Samson got in trouble, God would cause his spirit to come down on Samson. So it wasn't in his hair. It was in the spirit of God. That's where his strength was. But when he laid his head in Delilah's lap and let her shave his head, that disrupted his vow. So when the vow is over, you have no more protection. He had no more strength because he had broken the vow. Nazarite should not shave his head nor drink any strong drink. So when he allowed Delilah to shave that head, he was asleep. He didn't know. But after three times of her doing me wrong, I don't think I would have went to quite to sleep. Amen? Especially if I know that that's where my strength lies, in the vow that I took to God. So when he got in trouble and she called on the Philistines after she shaved his head, 
They came in and overtook him because he was like any other man. He didn't have any strength. Because the strength was in the spirit of God, which had to come down from heaven. But when he called on the Lord and they looked down and saw that he had shaved his head, there was no more help for Samson. He, his vow was just disannulled. How many times have we gotten into things and we called on the Lord and we wanted God to help us, but it was too late. We had disobeyed God. We had gotten away from the truth. We had started to do what we wanted to do. But God said, there's not going to be any help for you right now. I'm going to let you go through this thing by yourself. And look at the end of Samson. It was pitiful. They put his eyes out, made him grind the meal. If you're going to live a life, a spirit-filled life for God, you're going to need some divine help. You can't do this by yourself. Amen? You need the Spirit of God in your life working mightily. And Jesus was constantly reminding the apostles of this. Before he left, he said, I'm gonna, God's going to send you another comforter. You see, he was the comforter while he was here. Amen? They went to Jesus for everything. But when he left, he said, I'm going to pray that God send you a, another comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. Amen. And when, when he rose, he rose up and he went and found the apostles and he told them, look, examine my hands. Examine my side where they put the, I just want y'all to know this is me, you know. Because they were hiding. They were in a room hiding. Kind of scared, you know, like, he, he, no, he can't be alive. No, uh-uh. And Jesus didn't knock on the door. He didn't open the door. He walked through the wall. Amen. And they looked at him and he said, God's going to send you another comforter. And he blew on them. And he said, receive the Holy Ghost. But then the reason he blew on them was he told them to go to the upper room and wait. Tarry there until the Holy Ghost come. But then he blew on them and said, receive the Holy Ghost. Now the reason he blew on them and told them to receive the Holy Ghost because when the Holy Ghost came in the upper room, they had to be able to recognize that it was the Holy Ghost. And when they heard that, like a rushing mighty wind, they knew it was God. They knew it was the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost sat up on them like cloven tongues. And they all began to speak with tongues and give God the utterance. You know what? Some folk in churches will tell you speaking in tongues ain't necessary. But I'm here to tell you, it's very necessary. Amen? You get the Holy Ghost, you're going to speak in a, another language. If you speak Spanish, you won't speak Spanish. If you speak Italian, you won't speak Italian. You will speak in an unknown language, something you've never spoken before. Amen? But just like, you know, like cable TV, they give you these hookups, you know. So you can receive their signal. That's how the Holy Ghost is. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, you won't receive God's signals. Amen? You won't receive the word of God. You have to have something in you to be able to receive what God is trying to tell you or trying to give you. Hallelujah. You need a guide. People go on trips and they go to different countries. They get tour guides, don't they? Because they don't know nothing about the country. They don't know where to go. So they get tour guides. And the guide takes them all around and show them all the different sites in the country. That's just like the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is your guide. It's your teacher. You need to be taught. You need somebody to talk to you. And when you're doing something wrong or you're going to do something wrong, the Holy Ghost will tell you, don't do that. Don't say that. Don't go there. Wait. Go this way. And you go that way, and you, you find out it was a big accident there, and every car there was tow up. People went to the hospitals. You never know, but the Holy Ghost is there to give you guidance, to lead you, and to direct you into all truth. Amen? And you know what? I was thinking about that Holy Ghost. 
even when you die, it goes down to the grave with you. You know how they say don't go to a If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All old things are passed away. And everything, not some things, everything is become new. You quit lying. You quit using profanity. You start praising God. See, that's what a new tongue does. Amen? Everything has become new. Some people tell you, when you got the Holy Ghost, girl, that was it. You got saved. Then they take you in a room somewhere and start teaching you how to speak in tongues. So how did you get the Holy Ghost? You got to take me in a room and teach me how to speak in tongues? Give me a prayer language, they call it. The Holy Ghost is your prayer language. It knows what you have need of even before you get down to ask. Some people tell you, come on now, you, you got it. You say, but come on, we're going to give you a prayer language. And you come out the room. Your little, a little child can do that. If I got to teach the Holy Ghost how to talk to me, how is it going to talk to me unless I tell it what I need? It already knows how to talk to you. And it will speak in another language. Amen? So don't let nobody tell you that you got to learn how to speak in tongues. Uh Uh-uh, that's a gift that comes from above. And it comes straight from God. Hallelujah. And God will bless you with it. Amen? When you receive it, you'll speak in an unknown tongue. And that's because you're speaking back to God. Hallelujah. When you get the real Holy Ghost out of your, out of your belly, you, it, you flow, it flows rivers of living water. Amen? <clears throat> and you're never the same. You're not the same anymore. I remember when I got the Holy Ghost, I walked outside and everything looked new. The trees looked new. I looked at my hands, they looked new. Feet looked new. I said, my Lord. What, what, is, what is this? What happened to me? All I know is it was a beautiful experience. It ain't nothing like it. You can't compare it to nothing in this world. And I don't care what the enemy tells you, what you're going through, you need the Lord on your side. Jesus stressed having the Holy Ghost so much to the apostles. Why? Because they had to go and propagate that. They had to tell the people how important the Holy Ghost was. You need it. How you going to go back when he say, come my people? Can't go by plane. Can't go by bus. You can't go by train. You got to have that in you. You ever put two magnets together? You know they go, click. When he say, come my people, everything in it that's baptized in Jesus' name and has the Holy Ghost in them, will automatically be caught up. But without it, you can, you're just going to stay right down here. So when you want to get your ticket, you ain't got to pay no money for it, thank God. Because a lot of us wouldn't be in here right now. Because back when I got it 44 years ago, I was poor. I couldn't afford the Holy Ghost if it had cost money. The sorcerer Simon thought he could buy it and sell it. Amen? Lord, if people could sell it, we'd be be a bad, we'd be in a bad fix, Pastor. Because they have it so expensive, none of us would get it. None of us. We couldn't even afford it. But before you leave this earth, you need the Holy Ghost. That's what is going to take you from earth to glory. The Holy Ghost. People don't talk about it enough anymore. We don't witness to folk about it enough anymore. And it's a very vital thing that you need in your life. You need the Holy Ghost to to help you with your day-to-day problems. Sometimes you go through some things you think you're going to lose your mind. But you ain't going to lose your mind. You just think you're going crazy, amen? God let you get to the edge of your road. It's almost like you're in wit's end. 
but he'll bring you back. But you got to have faith, amen? No matter what you go through, you keep believing what God said. <clears throat> no matter what it is. And God will always bring you back. If you don't have faith, he ain't got nothing to pull you back with. But you got to keep believing God, no matter what the situation is. No matter what it costs you. Sometimes it'll cost you a girlfriend. Sometimes it'll cost you a boyfriend. But if God say let it go, you have to let it go. If God said don't do this, you have to don't do that. It's going to cost you something over here. I'm not going to lie to you. You're going to make a lot of sacrifices. But you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You realize that the joy of the Lord is your strength. And he told you that all things work together for good to them that love God and are thee called according to his purpose. So he tell you don't be weary in well doing. Because in due season you're going to reap if you faint not. Or oh, some of us get so tired look like we just want to faint. We, we want to just give up. But it ain't no time to give up. Amen. Giving up is not an option in holiness. You have to keep on pressing. You have to keep on praying. You have to keep on fasting. You have to do whatever you have to do to stay in the favor of God. Even if it means giving up a loved one. Amen? Someone you love. But when you get with somebody you love, you got to make sure that that someone loves God as much as you do. Because if they don't, it ain't going to be easy for you. Things just going to get worse for you. You want someone who believes God. I, ha I, I, I'm a, I have a second chance at marriage if I want to get married again. And you best believe he going to say he, Tai, she, my or something. Ah, he going to say something in another language and I'm going to hear it. I'm going to watch that person's life. Amen? Don't be so quick to grab somebody as soon as they get in the church. You don't know if they come over there just to get you and they're going to go right back out or what. Give him a year or two and let's see if he's going to get saved and stay saved. Give her a while. Amen? Because you might get her and she might tell you, I ain't doing that. I ain't doing that. Well, that's yours. You stuck now, just like bruh rabbit, stuck on that bruh patch. Yeah. So let's be careful who we entertain. Amen? Because the very person that you entertain sometimes will be the one the enemy sent to you to get you out of God's will. Amen? See, the enemy don't care nothing about us. Only God does. God takes a situation that you're going through and works good in it. The enemy takes that same situation and try to work bad. Amen? He works against God. So you have to try the Spirit by the Spirit. That's why it's so important to have the Holy Ghost. Try the Spirit by the Spirit. Don't be so quick to make a decision all the time. You pray and ask God for something, wait on it. Ain't no harm waiting. We wait on a lot of things. I'm still waiting on my, uh, what this stimulus check? I ain't got my stimulus check yet, but I'm still waiting on it. Yeah. So you have, we have to learn how to wait. Amen. See, I filed my taxes late, and, and, and they, they went by the last tax statement that you had there. And I retired in 2018, so that was the last one, and it was pretty big. So they figured I didn't need nothing, but I hope they go back through this year and look. Because everything has shut down, and I usually wait till April to file my taxes every year. Everything has shut down due to this COVID, you know. Boy, I messed up. So I'm still waiting on my stimulus check, but I'm, I'm looking for it every day. I go to that mailbox, so maybe my stimulus check here today. So y'all pray for me. 
I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. But don't be like Samson. Don't be foolish. Have God. Have the favor of God in your life. And then let a foolish person take that away from you. He died like a fool, even though he got the victory over a lot of them Philistines. Amen? Because he got to the pillars when he was getting ready, when they had him in the grind, and he was being a spectacle to them. Amen? And, and, and he asked God, just give me, strengthen me one more time. Just one more time. You know, sometimes you get so weak, and you, get, you know you're not doing what God wants you to do. All you got to do is say, Lord, strengthen me one more time. Strengthen me, Lord, again. Bless me, Lord, again. Because he's the God of another chance, amen, of a second chance and a third chance. Don't ever think you get down, you have to stay down. You don't. God is a forgiving God. He's a loving God. And there's nothing that you've done that's too bad for God to not forgive it, amen? Hallelujah. So don't, don't be like Samson. You got the favor of God. Keep the favor of God in your life. Favor ain't fair, but it's, it's right. Amen? Favor ain't fair because some people don't have favor. You know why? Because they won't obey this. But when you obey God's word and walk with him daily, oh, hallelujah, God loves that. Amen? So let us learn to take note to the things that are written in the Old Testament. Therefore, our learning. Amen? Pastor Offer say this is a school of higher learning. It is. It really is. Because when you hear these things, then you know not to do them or to do them. Because behind everything that God commands you to do, there's a blessing. Amen? If you do it. Amen? Amen. Pray my strength in the Lord. Good word from the Lord. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Thank you, Lord. The Bible talks about, and as she's talked about, you need God's spirit. He said, if that spirit be in you that raised Christ from the dead, it shall also quicken your mortal body. Amen. And Samson, he was a mess because he allowed his own desires to rule him, wherein he should have been led by the spirit. If there's anyone here today that wants to turn over their life unto the Lord, get baptized in the name of Jesus, all you need to do is just raise your hand. We've got clothes for you to get baptized into. Amen. we got uh, water for you to get baptized into as well. Thank you, Lord. And we got a great big old God that will fill you with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. And I like what she's saying, and it's also true. Amen. If all you got to do is ask. Amen. Ask and ye shall receive. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. Amen. All right. Well, we want the church to stand and we certainly do praise God once again for that anointed word of God. And we've got a, I've got a lot on my plate to kind of pick through. Amen. And, and to receive because God is with us. Amen. That's Emmanuel. Amen. God is with us through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Um, uh, remember the usher board meeting on next week? Amen. And so we want you to prepare yourselves for that. Um, pardon me? Yes. And my media team, we're going to have conference call today at 5 o'clock. Amen. Thank you, Lord. All right. All minds clear? Uh, we certainly do thank and praise God for each and every one of you. With uplifted hands, oh gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you that you continue to bless us and help us and take us through even the more. Hallelujah. Fill us with your anointing. Fill us with your precious gift of the Holy Ghost. Protect these thy great people now and throughout uh, this week until we meet again at the appointed time. Father, we thank you and praise you. Give you all glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, love on one another, well, as much as you can. <laughs>